Hello everyone and welcome to this video Sun Frontier video. My name is Jay Wakefield and in this video we're going to be looking at and working on a laptop that um, hasn't been seen on this channel for a wee while. <clears throat> for those of you who don't know or can't remember, this machine is the Armada 7800 and um, some of you may or may not remember from uh, my video about it, this machine has an American keyboard. Now, um, as you will may or may not remember, I installed Windows 98 Second Edition with Office 97, very Luke Miller approved, I might add, actually. Um, <clears throat> and then I was playing on it, on, you know, by myself. Um, I must have been um, doing something because I was running uh, Sonic CD on it. Whether it ran, I... Can he mind? However, um, this machine has um, been with me for about a year, and um, it's a lot like the 7750 and the 7770, except for, well, some of the design language is slightly different. Uh, for example, this... Um, this nameplate where it says Compaq uh, Armada 7800, slightly different and the screen layout the screen is bigger <clears throat> and it's uh, off to the left so it's kind of like um, a thinkpad in that respect and uh, the speakers which on the 7750 and 7770 which usually are here and here obviously um, obviously that pillar is a wee bit too thin um, for any kind of speaker maybe just a wee derpy one but the speakers are now under the screen here and here. Now, the reason I brought this machine out is because my friend Billy Carr, he actually uh, pointed me to an auction on eBay. It was um, in the States. It was for a restore CD for this computer. And, of course, well, I just had to have that. You know, it's a compact quick restore disc. Of course I'm going to use it. So, I uh, bid on it, and I won, or did a bite now, I can't even mind, and uh, here is the desk, in a nice wee case. It's uh, the Compaq Armada 7800, quick restore. This is a 7800. So what we're going to do, is we're actually going to attempt to restore the machine, using this quick restore disc. Hopefully it should work, because... If the keyboard that's on it is the original, it means the machine itself is either from the United States or from Australia um, or anywhere else, any other jurisdiction that uses the US keyboard layout. So I've inserted the CD. I don't expect it to do anything. What I do expect, though, is once I shut the machine down, it will reboot. <clears throat> I honestly f thought that that had frozen. I was away to say, yep, it's a way to be restored, not before time. Now, it says starting Windows 95, that brings me to something else. This has run, I've run this with Windows 98. I don't know if that's the correct system for me to run it with. I guess we're a way to find out. <laughs> this compact disc is provided for the sole purpose of um, enabling a compact personal computer owner to restore original pre-installed software to a compact personal computer software provided on the CD is subject to the full terms and conditions of the manufacturer's original software license agreement shipped with the compact product. Any use other than that specified above is strictly prohibited and will violate the manufacturer's original software license agreement. Welcome to the Compact Quick Restore. This utility is supplied by Compact to provide an easy way for you to restore the software that was originally pre-installed with your Compact personal computer. Caution! Quick Restore destroys all data on your hard disk. If you have added personal files or software that you do not wish to lose, copy them to diskettes before proceeding. Do you wish to continue? Yes, I do. 
The serial number is located either on the side of your computer or on the back panel of the computer. The serial number is printed on a serial label. Please type the serial number, then press enter. Okay, well, I took a photograph of the serial number earlier, so I will away and do that and uh, see if it works. Well, I'm having the most annoying problem where the uh, Quick Restore CD is saying that the serial number, which is taped to the bottom of this computer, is invalid. So I'm going to... I've just I've just uh, imaged a uh, setup diskette, <clears throat> and I went, I'm hoping that um, I can actually um, extract the actual serial number from here. If not, it looks like it's going to be a trawl through the internet to try and find a way either to get the serial number or to crack it, which is. Um, well, that is really something, really, because, you know, legitimate disk, legitimate computer, having to crack the disk to make it work on the computer it was designed to work on. <clears throat> I mean, I, I'm very much aware that the um, American Compact uh, Presario 1220 CD will work on the British Compact Presario 1220, so there's no reason why these two shouldn't work. So I really don't know what is going on. I mean, I've tried typing the number in. I took a photograph of it, zoomed in, so it's... You know, I, I just don't even know. It's annoying, is what it is. Aha, uh -huh, here we go. Um, let's see now. Serial number. Of course, it's missing. The bloody serial number is missing. <sighs> I know there's a way to write it to the desk, but... <sighs> I just don't know what I'm going to do then. Well, what an ordeal that was. Firstly... Well, this is, um... Firstly, I, um... Well, I did some sleuthing, and I found that um, I'm not sure that this is the original hard disk in here, you see. Now, I happen to know that uh, Compaq... Um, Packard Bell write an area of their hard disk uh, called the Tattoo. Um, they, they've done this on European machines for a while. And... Um, Basically, this is the area in the UIA part of the hard disk, whatever the frick that means. Um, that basically um, tells the Quick Restore program that yes, this is a you know a compact machine, and this is how you should probably Quick Restore it. So I. Also realised there was a programme on this desk called UIABOMWR, which I could use to write a BOM ID. Couldn't find one. Found out how to work out what it could be, um, judging by the serial number underneath. Tried writing that, tried entering the serial number, it was wrong. Put the CD in to try and copy the uh, UIABOMWR file to a, a bootable Windows 95 floppy desk. And it was then that I realised in the data folder there was loads of files about the BOM ID. And I found that my serial number has the digits CB42 in the middle. But this CD has a BOM ID, a, a file detailing one of the possible BOM IDs could be CB43. So I retried my serial number as it was, but instead of putting CB42, I put CB43. And this is what's happened. I've also written that uh, BOMID to the hard disk, so goodness knows what it thinks it is. I don't even know if I have written it. You know, it, it could just be one of those things. It's, I mean, it's like you, you write the file and it restarts straight afterwards. I, I think it's a wee bit too simple, you know what I mean? It's, it could be... I mean, I could program the hard disk to be anything. You know, I could... Yeah, you know, I could program it to think it's a Compact Presario 2240 and then successfully restore this machine using the 2240 CD. But then again, I 
restore successfully restoring a compact uh, res successfully restoring anything using the Preserio 2240 CD is um, very simple. I could, re I mean, ser seriously, I mean, I could, I could just, I could restore a Toyota Avensis if it had an X86 processor. Goodness knows what it needed. But um, I don't know why the speakers are going. <laughs> when you press enter, your computer will restart and initialize a hard disk before the restoration process can continue. I suppose there is one good thing. I will actually, hopefully, be getting a. Re a ba yes, I, I have it! It's there! The BIOS is there! Thank you! <laughs> Ugh, jings. And now I've got... There's two of them! There's two! I... Yeah. <clears throat> right. So, this is restoring... And because it's got an i386 folder... I get the feeling that I'm going to be restoring this computer using a really useless version of Windows. It's a wee bit embarrassing right enough. What I might do is get a bigger hard disk at some point. I have one partition for the, the restore image. The, 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 come on, help me out here. Come on. The original software image. And then Archronus up with um, Windows 98. That might be a neat idea. Although this could be the original hard disk, I just don't even know. I, I can't remember. I don't remember what came on this machine. I'll have to go back and watch a video. Seriously, my memory is absolute pants. I swear down. And there's certain things I remember. Like, you know, my, um, you know, my friend, you know, I, I remember, I can, <laughs> I can remember what my friend Keza said to me a year ago, right enough, or two years ago. Um, but I can't even remember, um... Anything like this. So, even though computing is my trade, you know, it's just that I don't go into work and, you know, there's a Compact Armada 7800 waiting on me. I did have to do work once on a Toshiba Tecra 8000, which was you know, quite interesting because that's, a, that's another system I have the uh, Restore Media for. Please forgive me for wasting water. I'll probably be doing the washing up. Well, there's no probably about it. I usually do do washing up. And this bit of the video goes out to the Paramount Galaxy because... Um, I think I might have upset him by buying a Samsung Galaxy device. Or four. <laughs> I don't have all four with me at the same time. Obviously, you know, I, I kind of tried to... I had uh, Galaxy Tab 4, too small, screen faded out at one side. Tried a Galaxy Tab 2, too slow. Galaxy Tab 3 was just right. <laughs> So I got the 10 inch version, the Galaxy Tab 4 10 inch would be just fine as well, I'm pretty sure of it, except it's a wee bit too expensive for me right now. Um, yeah, it's uh, what I always do, you know, when installing Windows, is uh, go away and make myself a nice wee cup of tea, and um, I would say at some point, either this evening or tomorrow, this floor is going to um, be meeting um, a very special friend of it, um, the Mop and Bucket. Um, of course, I like to take care of this floor because it's... Um, <coughs> Oh, 
It's uh, it's basically similar to uh, what B Bishop PCM has uh, down in his kitchen in his uh, wee condo. So I'm going to leave this to restore. I'm guessing it'll take its time. Hopefully it uh, should do it. I'll be able to find out which operating system is on this disk. My money is on Windows NT4. This machine, I think you could get it... Um, I've, I've made it the perfect Windows 98 machine. However, I believe this machine will have originally come pre-loaded uh, pre with uh, either Windows NT4 or Windows 95. Yeah. <laughs> but there you have it. Um, we'll just kind of find out in due course, you know, what, what um, is installed. So, yeah. So, um, away I go and, um, and uh, you know, get some stuff done while I wait on this. Well... About 14 years after I started, it seems, Quirk Restore is finally complete. So I'm going to restart the computer, and I'm going to have to be quite quick in what I'm doing here. First of all, I think I've just confused the computer. Okay. I don't know what just happened there, but um, I guess we're away to find out which version of Windows we're using. Windows... Windows NT! Right, okay. It's quite funny because last time I, I actually did say I have never actually done a uh, Windows. I've never actually um, done a uh, an image restore using Windows 2000. Well, I've never done with NT either. So I'm guessing this will work in the same way as the ThinkPad X24 did. Um, Probably should have read that notice, you know. I wonder what Windows runtime I was running uh, when that message came up. Also, I'm a wee bit disappointed it is NT, if I'm honest, because, uh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> it means that, I mean, this machine has got good graphics and what have you on it. If it was something like the ThinkPad 390X, you know, and I'd had to restore disk for that, and that was Windows NT, now that would have been fine, because that has Neomagic Magigraph 256AV, which is horrible. This, however, has ATI graphics. Got, no, 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 sorry, it's got SIS, no, it's got S. no. Try again, Jay, it's got S3 graphics, but I believe it's still 3D. So, yeah, but then again, this is a, um... A business machine <clears throat> but it does make me think about getting a bigger and better hard drive <clears throat> so C CB43 must be Windows 95 no let's can I not do that? CB43 must be Windows NT. CB42 must be Windows 95. Mm. Probably one of the quickest NT4 installations I've ever done as well.
And if I can get hold of a Windows 95 Restore CD for this, I would love to do so. Very much so. Um, <clears throat> and then I would probably upgrade it to Windows 98, if I'm going to be completely honest with myself. I think, like the Armada... Oh, James, what model number is that, the new? See, why couldn't I have came with NT4? Seriously. <laughs> 1700. That is Neo Magic graphics as well. James, that should have been an NT4 machine. Seriously. Instead of this. Um, so apparently setup is initialising, and I think by that light on it, it's actually waiting on the floppy drive, which isn't there. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Tell you the restore disk I would like, 7750MT. Aha! Windows NT set up for compact portables. Really? It's... Is a branded version, just like that branded version of IBM, uh, the uh, Windows 2000 set up for uh, IBM machines. Ah. Please wait. Setup is still initialising. It's still trying to find the floppy drive that isn't there. <clears throat> wake up, wake up, wake up. And then this is kind of just the regular Windows NT setup. I remember we got my first ever copy of NT from uh, in 2005. The guy was extremely patient. I wasn't the best with my payment. I feel really bad because the guy was just brilliant. Whereas my second purchase I paid right away. Now, it's time to put my name in. Put in a Windows NT products key. Now to put in a computer name. To put in an admin password. <laughs> Ready to initialize Windows NT networking. Greenwich Mean Time. I'll set the date because of course it's January the January the first, nineteen ninety seven. Except for in the way that it's more like October the thirtieth, twenty. Fourteen at approximately eighteen forty nine. There we go, and um, <clears throat> getting your computer ready to run Windows NT. Okay. That's what we're doing just now. We'll be done in a few minutes and then you'll be all up and running. We've just got to make sure all the software's on here, like, so, you know, you can use the desktop and the sound and the screen and all that. Usually takes a few minutes, but if you're patient, it'll be done very quickly. See, that's it going there now. Uh, 
Okay, that's it sorted. Now here's the system trying to give it Desco. It can't decide what it's doing. It's like, am I setting up my, am I setting up Exchange or am I just copying files? What am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? Again. And I'll probably need to make up a CD with Saris Pack 6. Yeah. Thanks. Now, it is my belief that this machine originally came with Windows 95. But a restore CD is a restore CD is a restore CD, and a restore CD makes a video. So, yeah. Wow, this is just, <laughs> it was going really, really quickly and then all these files had to be copied. So I wonder if that's it installing everything in it. It's basically just doing it within Windows Setup or whether, like the IBM ThinkPad X24, like the um, Packard Bell iMedia, it will go into Windows and just install a load of things. We'll never know. Ah yes, here we go. Saving configuration. Now, if um, this bit is the same as um, regular Windows NT4 setup, then I would say that that is uh, pretty much it done. Removing, removing temporary installation files and then it'll restart. Did I call that or what? Now, now we get to find out what happens next. There's another Restore video coming up because, um... My uh, friend Billy Corr has managed to source me a uh, Dell Windows 98 CD. So that should be quite fun. Okay. So that's me in Windows NT4. And, yep, it would seem... That what this is going to do... And I'm going to need to obviously... Um, I am going to need to let this set itself up because what it is going to do is install all the stuff it needs on here um, now that Windows has been installed. So let's have a wee bit of reflection. The Windows, the Compact Quick Restore can actually install a fully working Windows 95 image and have it deployed within, mm, shall we say about 15 minutes? Whereas with Windows NT, all it can actually do is employ, uh, employ, deploy a load of files that will set up Windows XP and then run a script that will actually install Windows X, uh, Windows XP, Windows NT to Compact's configuration, and then install the programs on, and then kind of run this wee guy who's going to install all the other programs on top of it. Um, <clears throat> so deployment Windows X. Damn, I keep saying Windows XP. Windows XP takes... Damn it! 
Windows NT4 takes a lot longer. <laughs> I really want a Windows 95 CD for this to restore it with. <laughs> This has not gone well at all. Right, okay, now, I think, while this is setting itself up, it's time maybe for another cup of tea. <clears throat> okay, so this is a machine installed. You get Internet Explorer 4.0. You also get um, Active Desktop. And a removable disk. I don't know what that is. And, um, oh, that's kind of pretty much it. And this quite interesting suspend button, which is a compact program, actually enables the machine to suspend because, of course, Windows NT does not obviously support advanced power management. I did have to adjust the screen resolution myself. And obviously that'll... Oh! Okay, so... This machine has actually made it so that Windows NT4 can support advanced power management. Now that, I like. So let's have a look at the BIOS, see what's what's in there. Let's have a look at computer setup. Oh dear, I see a slight I mean you probably can't pick it up on the camera, believe it or not, but I do see a slight flicker there. Well, one of the bulbs might be going. Still no serial number on this. Bit odd. But it is, um, but the uh, BIOS partition is there. Let's have a look at video. S3 Verge MX PCI graphics controller. I, yes, I believe it is 3D. So if we have a look... Um, so let's go back to Windows NT 4.0. So, <clears throat> it's, um, it's quite an interesting restore disk. Obviously, like most business machines, this, does, uh, this doesn't actually come with any software to speak of. <clears throat> and this just literally comes with... Um, And then there's Cardware NT, PC card support. So obviously, there's software on this designed to make it as easy to use as Windows 95, I would say. Um, I wonder if there's uh, any enhanced mouse pointers on this. I'm guessing not. I'm guessing I'll need to install them. Internet Explorer provided by Compaq. Yeah, I'll have to install the enhanced mouse pointer so I can actually use it. But um, you've got Compact Diagnostics for Windows NT, Compact Dictionary, Create Boot Diskit, Create Emergency Repair Diskit, Intelligent Manageability, Options Catalog, Reference Guide, Safety and Comfort Guide, Technical Release Notes. 
If we go to the options catalogue, this is a wee bit of corporate shell as a non-compact part because um, I mean this this whole thing. I I don't know if if you're supposed to print or what have you. Um, contact your compact authorized dealer, reseller, distributor to place an order or request information. Product offered vary by country, model, and stock availability. Products may not be available for immediate delivery. Product specifications, prices, and programs are subject to change or cancellation without notice. When placing an order, use the part number uh, under the accessory description. To view the accessories, choose from the accessory category and accessory drop-down list on the left. To create an accessories list for reference, when contact and compact, click mark accessory button to mark an accessory. To view or print the list of accessories you have marked, click, click the Marked Accessories List button to display the list. To view one of the docking bases from another angle, uh, click the Animate button, not activated for other accessible accessories. So, so basically I could order things like a, a battery pack, a replacement, um, an automobile and... Um, Aircraft adapter, um, a battery charger, expansion boards, memory, Ethernet board, um, removable drives, a 20 max CD ROM drive, external diskette drive, removable hard drive, um, LS120 drives, that's a super desk. Um, PC cards. I could order. Could order a. Could order a whole load of things, including a USB card, soft PC card, uh, multi-bay device adapters, um, half-height multi-bay adapter, LT five thousand multi-bay adapter. Um, communications, so, uh, compact, uh, what's that? Microcom 550, another modem, the 520, intelligent fax modem, compact speed pack cable, uh, cellular PC card, infrared transceiver, or, or a headset. Compact Armada headset. You could look like the proper business part there. Um, international modem adapter. <laughs> international modem cables. Cellular cables. NTSC PAL adapter. Right. So basically, that's the compact catalogue for buying stuff. Like I say, you've got Internet Explorer, active desktop updates, and uh, I think you're on Service Pack 3 for Windows NT4. Um, it's got IE 4.0.471. I No, IE 4.0.471. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, it doesn't say which Service Pack's on here. Um, service Pack 3. Update. Um, oh, of course, of course, yeah. Um, IE4. Why, why isn't it just... <laughs> you useless thing, seriously. So I could basically just go and uninstall the service pack and try and install this one. Uninstall a previously installed service pack. What's this actually going to do? Is this going to just remove IE and then I can install service pack 3 and then put IE back on and... I don't know. Don't know nothing, me. Nah, nah, mate. Don't know nothing. So, yeah. Um... Chances are I probably might redo this restore so I can actually read that notice. 
Oh, what's this going to do now? I can see what I'm going to do. I mean, it does seem that there's only like a couple gigs for NT4, so chances are I could probably add Cronus Windows 98 onto this, even if it is just an 8 gig hard drive. Um, so yeah, I mean, there is always that option, um, because to be honest, uh, the extra partitions would be a wee bit useless for me. I don't know what that removable storage drive is either. Um, so, you know, I mean, there, there's always options, you know, there's always things that I can do, um, you know, quite exciting stuff as well, you know, so I can actually keep this machine kind of useful, um, and yet still have an NT4 machine. To be honest, what I wouldn't mind having is the um, NT4 disc for the 1700. Even though my particular 1700 came preloaded with Windows 95, but then again, so did this. Now we find out the horror. Aha, previously installed service pack has been previously uninstalled now. Um, wow, I've, I've never seen... <laughs> Is Outlook Express still installed? You... Is it just, it's just literally uninstalled IE? Everything else is installed. <laughs> You mean absolutely serious? Serious? <laughs> I've never, I've never actually seen this like this before. <laughs> so IE is now a service pack. I have a question. What happens if I actually wanted to reinstall Internet Explorer? I mean, seriously. Don't want to create an uninstall directory. Yeah, no, that, that is a good question. What happens now? <coughs> I maybe want to reinstall A, because of course I do, because the year is 1997 or 98, and I have, um, you know, I want to use the latest version of IE to browse the web with. I, I just, what, what would I do now? Seriously, what would I do? Um, do I need to now buy myself an IE4 CD, or do I need to... Do I need to actually go online and see if I can re-download the files? Um, what do I do? Didn't really think this one through thoroughly, did you, Compaq? I don't think so. Um, <clears throat> seems that all the restore CDs I seem to get from Compaq are ones with IE4. Um, not at all, it's just kind of... Keep things simple. Let's, let's not go over writing your version to files right enough. Ah, <sighs> oh, yeah. Oh, that would just remove a service pack. Yeah, just kind of drag IE4 kicking and screaming away from there. It's like, what about all this other shit? Nah, uh, just leave that. It'll be fine. <clears throat> so you can still use Outlook Express 4, but woe betide if you want to use Outlook, at night, Outlook 98. You're in with a wee problem? So I've installed Service Pack 3, very nice, Cardware NT's coming up, um, it still reckons it's got Internet Explorer 4.0 on here, it was very messy, very messy. Um, Compaq, Service Pack 3, Admin Tools. So, I mean, what do I do now? 
And how big is this partition? It's 1.99 gigs. This is also 1.99 gigs. So what is on these partitions? CPQ net. Do I go in there? No, 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 no. That is not where you install stuff. Neither's that. Ah, I for setup. So I would go here, but then again, I would have had to have known that. So I can actually go ahead and reinstall Internet Explorer 4, provided by Compaq. So what I want to do is just upgrade the newer items only. Oh, look, Internet Explorer web browser. I have, a f I have this horrible, horrible feeling. It's just going to upgrade the web browser and not put Active Desktop on. I don't, I don't understand why, but yeah, there it is. Look at this OS loader <laughs> Let's try again. Only this time we're going to reinstall all the components. A 4.0 patch. <laughs> what have I done now? <laughs> I've patched IE2 to A4. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I, th I think I've got to go to... Um, I think I've got to go to Google Play and download the latest firmware update for this and, and then that will come with Internet Explorer 4, right? Enough, is, is that it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is a compact, all restored, back to Internet Explorer 4, derp, and um, with Service Pack 3, which was probably already installed. Yeah. It just doesn't say it in uh, my computer. I mean... <clears throat> It's probably there in the build number, but, um, oh well. 
But um, that concludes this video, Some Frontier video. I hope you've enjoyed watching it. If you have, please feel free to subscribe and uh, like us on Facebook. But thank you for watching, and I hope you'll all join me for my next video.